Hello everyone, AI video is moving really fast. Now we've talked about the Mochi One preview, which is from Genmo AI, and the Tencent Hanyuan video, which is currently the best performing open source AI video diffusion model. And right now we have something really cool that enables these two models to run faster on local machines. It's the Fast Video Framework. Now the Fast Video Framework is like Stable Diffusion or Flux, where we have turbos and LCM sampling methods, allowing us to use a lower sampler to run faster generations. As you can see here, there's a comparison of the Han Yuan video. The left side is using normal sampling steps, and the Fast Video Framework is applied on the right side, using just a few steps to generate video with a finished result. As you can see, the generation time is faster. And of course, there will be some lower quality or less detail with a low sampling steps framework. Here we have the GitHub repository page of Fast Video. You guys can check this out, do some research, and understand what this open source framework is and how it's going to improve the generation speed in local AI video. Now, as they mentioned, they're using an H100 GPU to measure the generation speed between the normal transformer diffusion model and the fast video framework diffusion model for both the fast Han Yuan video and the fast Mochi One AI video model. So when you go to the Hugging Face page where you see the fast video community page, you see there are a few fine-tuned AI video models for Han Yuan video and also the Mochi One preview video. What they call it is the fast Mochi and the fast high diffuser. When you click into the diffuser or the full model widgets of the text to video, you can go to the files version here. As you can see, it's the full size of the model of the text to video model files, which requires a 25 gigabyte download for the diffusion transformer model files. And you also need to download all the text encoders and also the VAE full versions. But when we're running in Comfy UI, we again have some custom nodes and also wrappers to compress those files into one save tensor file. As we previously talked about Hun Yuan video, we're going to continue trying out fast video for Hun Yuan video. And as you know, the recent update of Comfy UI supports Hun Yuan video natively, where it has the dual clip loader with the Hun Yuan video type. This allows you to select natively using the dual clip loader and the diffuser models here, where we're using the compressed save tensor files of the checkpoint models, which you put in the unit folder or the diffusion models folder. These are capable of loading these files. And today we're going to try out fast video for Han Yuan video, which is also able to load one single model file in the diffusion model folder, or you can locate that in the unit folder as well. Now, these Han Yuan video fast video framework compiled model files, you can download these save tensor files in the KJ Hugging Face repository for Han Yuan video comfy, where he has compiled the previous Han Yuan video 720p resolution BF16 and also the FP8 model type. And they also have the fast video model types as well. This is running in FP8 versions for fast video. Therefore, this is going to be a trimmed down size. As you can see, it's a 13 gigabyte file size. It's trimmed down, compressed a lot, and is friendly to run on a local PC. And it's also using the same VAE file, which you can load for the VAE loader. And you see at the bottom here, the fast video LoRa FP8 is also available. So, in this way, we're able to use the default compiled Han Yuan video 720p model files as the diffusion model and use the LoRa loader to use the fast video framework. Now, I'll compare both of those using the fast video LoRa and the model files that are using fast video itself. What's the difference between them and how do they perform differently? You can download both of these, the 13 gigabyte file and the 174 megabyte LoRa file for testing. But what I found is that when I use the KJ compiled Fast Video LoRa, this 174 megabyte file, it has better performance running with the diffusion model that's repackaged by ComfyUI itself. Officially, they have the Han Yuan Video Text to Video 720p resolution BF16 format save tensor files, which are 25 gigabytes. But the performance and loading speed of that with the LoRa of KJ Fast Video are better compared with the KJ compiled CFG, the FP16, or the traditional or oldest version 720p resolution FP8 files, which don't perform as well in Comfy UI in terms of performance and the generated results. So, 
For running the fast video LoRa FP8, I'd suggest using the base model from the comfui.org hugging face, the repackaged Honyuan video save tensor files. Now, I'll link all these links in the description below. You guys can check it out, and I'll label where they're going to be saved in the locations in ComfyUI as well. So, come back to ComfyUI, and as you can see, I've already downloaded the fast video models, which are saved again in the diffusion models folder, or the UNet folder in the models folder subfolder. And as you can see, in the latest update of ComfyUI, you're able to use the native LoRa nodes to run with the Hanyuan video diffusion model, where the LoRa is also saved in the models LoRa subfolder, where I've also downloaded the fast video LoRa FP8 models LoRa models. So this is something you have to be aware of first. If you're using the LoRa models to run fast video, then your diffusion model is not going to select the fast video and the other way around, which is going to use the normal FP8 or the FP16 Hanyuan video models. So use the Hanyuan video models 720 PBF16 save tensor files, and then you're able to use the LoRa models. Otherwise, if you use both the diffusion model and the LoRa model using fast video, I've tried that, but the generated video will be messy and pixelated. So, this is how you use the low-step generation LoRa models, just like LCM, what we've tried before. If you're using an LCM LoRa, then use a normal diffusion model. Or if you're using an LCM diffusion model, then you don't need to use a LoRa model of the LCM. That's the simple rule, and I've labeled that in the note here. Again, I'll share this workflow publicly, and you guys can download it and try it out. So basically, I've labeled two rows of notes here. So what I'll do is first bypass the LoRa models. We're going to try with the base model that's compiled with the Fast Video Framework, which is this one, the Fast Video FP8 models, and I have some prompts here. I've also generated some prompts previously in my Llama 3.2, where I have some text prompts here to try out using the other settings in the workflow. Not too many configurations you need to change. With the previous video that I talked about Hanyuan Video, the only thing that's going to be changed is the sampling steps, where, by default, Fast Video is using six steps for generating video. So therefore, in the basic scheduler, set the steps to six rather than setting it to 20 or 30 like normal generation time. So just apply this as the concept of LCM or turbo models that we've experienced before in stable diffusion or flux. And let's try another prompt and we'll see how that goes. Before that, let's show the existing examples here where I have misty foreign ancient trees and, you know, elf style animations. A young princess elf appears in the video scenes here, and there you go. It's, well, not a high quality thing because it's six steps. What do you expect, right? But it's fast, really fast. Not even a minute generating these scenes on my NVIDIA 4090. And uh, we can try another text prompt here. So just paste my prompts here, do some formatting, and we're ready to go and run this. Okay, so I've generated the video result here. As you can see, pretty realistic styles of animation where the princess is walking forward like a close-up shot. And this is the generated text prompt. And actually, let's look at the generation time of this running of the AI video, where I've tested this text prompt two times. The same text prompts are also using only 32 seconds using the six sampling steps to generate video. A lot of improvement in terms of the, you know, the local PC generation time for the Hanyuan video, as well as the generated result art looking very similar to what we originally had in the Hanyuan video FP8 save tensor model files, where usually I ran these save tensor files without using fast video and without using the fast video LoRa. It's about the same kind of quality with this video and looks pretty nice, also reducing the generation time. We don't have to spend like 20 minutes for just 2 or 3 seconds of video like that. So, mark it down. This is 32 seconds using the fast video diffusion model for Hanyuan video. Next, we're going to try the LoRa, where we come here to the LoRa models. We enable this one using the fast video LoRa FP8. And for the diffusion model, we're using the normal Hanyuan video 720 PBF16 save tensor files. That's good enough. Now the weights type, we have to set to FP8. Of course, everything else is the same. We're using the same text prompt here again to try with all the same settings and see what the difference is, okay? Okay, so we got the generated result. I again ran it two times and saw how it performed with the LoRa models using the fast video LoRa. The generated result is pretty stable. 
just like what we saw in the previous examples where we have this one for 2 seconds and we have another video with these 2 seconds of video. Video quality, of course, isn't going to be compared with the other paid subscription models where you have high quality definitions, high definition video quality, but the smoothness, I can say, is getting there. It's like what we had originally in the Hanyuan Video Original Diffusion model, but even then, the quality of FP8 has been trimmed down, a lot of detail. You see, the pixel is pretty rough here compared with what I've demoed previously using the full versions of Hanyuan Video, which was able to generate better quality, just like what they have on the demo page here. But then, Using the LoRa of the Fast Video LoRa models, we actually have the same performance result as using the Fast Video Diffusion model for Hunyuan Video, where it's loading in the same time. 32 seconds for both methods. So the top two are using the Diffusion models of Fast Video Hanyuan Video, and the bottom two parts here, the loading history here, are using the Fast Video LoRa FP8 connected with the FP8 Hanyuan video diffusion model. So both methods are performing the same performance wise and quality wise. It's about the same. There's not much difference as you can see right here. This is the LoRa generated result. And this is the one that's using the fast video diffusion model to generate a little bit of flickering at the end. But you see the pixels are kind of rough. It's not going to be very detailed, high definition like what we saw in Clang AI or Runway, those kind of professional you know, paid subscription AI video generators. But you know, using FP8, you can run it on a local PC and, you know, consume about 20 gigabytes of VRAM in the processing times and using only 32 seconds on my local PC. That's pretty nice to get such a result. I bet if I had to render in better quality, push the sampling steps higher and also use higher resolutions, then that can happen. It's doable, but for demo purposes, I'll just leave it like this using a 2 second video length, which is 49 frames. Of course, the FP8 diffusion model, or the fast video diffusion model as well, are able to generate about 121 frames, which is about 5 seconds on my NVIDIA 4090. And that's how so far the limit of a local PC is, how much it can generate using 20 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, so that's pretty good for local PC AI video development, what we have right now for open source. And also, I've again tried it with my existing workflow that I did previously for Hanyuan Video. So in this workflow here, I demonstrated in the previous video talking about Hanyuan Video running in Comfy UI natively. You can check that out if you want to go in depth about this workflow. And basically, I can do an image to prompt and use forms to generate a text prompt because Hanyuan Video right now currently only supports text to video model. They might have an update plan for image to video later, but we don't know when. So at this moment, we're only able to use text to video and just do a little bit of hacking tricks to get around using the image as an input for generating the video. So right here, we have again the fast video 720 pfp8 model files loaded in the diffusion model and i've generated this ice brick with a meteor crashing onto the ice brick this kind of disaster video scene and the existing workflow of this is also able to run the fast video model and of course as well you can use the lora models just like what i demoed just now using the fast video lora fp8 models and in this way, if we enable this LoRa model, we can come back to the diffusion model nodes. We select the Hanyuan Video FP 8720 P Save Tensor files. Then in this way, we're also able to generate the same result like what I just showed, consuming about the same generation time. But in this workflow, I demonstrated before as well, I have the upscaler with SD Optimize SD Upscale using Flux, or just saving more time using just the model to upscale. And then lastly, I have the MM loader, MM audio loader for generating the sound effect audios for the video clips. So in this way, we can enable this upscaler and also the audio FSX groups where we have the audios generated in the last steps. So let's try another prompt here or another image, I should say, to check it out. Okay, so I picked this image, two French bulldogs, very cute and generated this first result of the combinations with my reference image. Of course, it's not an image to video, so it won't be the same image as the first frames, but then we can have the same combinations of that in the video. And it's, uh, you know, pretty awkward, but 
looks funny for a French bulldog to have a front paw trying to swat out some bugs or kick some bugs at the end of the video. And then I did an upscale using the Just Model upscale. Very simple. And lastly, I have the generated result with the sound. Let's check it out here. So as you can see, it's pretty nice after the upscale. Just using upscale with models is able to create pretty decent movement motions of the dog, the ear flickering a little bit, and then there's the front paw trying to swat away a bug. And then the other English bulldog doesn't look like a Frenchie, but it's an English bulldog on the right side and looks pretty realistic, but the ratio of the body isn't correct. So, you know, AI video, it happens. A French bulldog should be way smaller than an English bulldog. If people who have kept dogs, they'll know about this. So that doesn't matter because it's AI video. And so back to the topics here. Fast Video Laura can generate in about the same time as what we have using the generations using the Diffusion's model loader. It's also the same 32 seconds in the sampling steps. And then there's some extra time, one minute that I spend for upscaling, and that's only, you know, an extra one minute of time for the model upscaling in this part. So every frame passed into here is going to make this generated result. And the audio generation doesn't take any time at all on my computer setup. So there's no need to count even one second for that. So there we have the two French or two bulldogs in general in these video scenes. Again, one thing I have to mention is that some people have misconceptions about using low sampling step AI models in video or in image generation as well. They tend to use LCM, Lightning Turbo, or even this fast video framework and expect it to generate high quality, very detailed video in the first sampling group or in the first scheduler here. And to be honest, it won't happen because first of all, using 10 steps here, as in my examples here, or six steps in the other examples it shows on Hugging Face, where it's again using just slightly six steps. So, as you can see, the Hanyuan video six steps, fast video, although they said it's going to be better, but as you can see, it's not very detailed in the real quality if we were to measure the quality of the video. And that's the reality. So, don't give yourself an illusion, over expect that, you're using O low sampling steps and that also requires very detailed video. Well, it won't happen. That's it for this conclusion of Fast Video Framework, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.